Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Chair, for the introduction. So I'm Zhao Wei from UCLA. Um, today I'm going to introduce our work on data plane signaling in cellular IoT networks. This is a joint work with my colleagues, uh, Boyan, Jinghao, Yunqi, and my advisor, Dr. Sun Wulu. So cellular IoT, or CIoT, is a 3GPP standardized low power wide area network technology to support emergent IoT applications. First, it provides anywhere, anytime ubiquitous data services to IoT applications with existing cellular infrastructure. It also provides low power consumption by techniques such as power saving mode to extend the battery lives. Cellular IoT includes two technologies for different use cases. First, it supports um, the applications with relatively higher throughput voice call or mobility with the category M. It also has MB IoT or narrowband IoT, which is a more stripped down design for lower end devices. Both technology are considered future proof and will be a part of 5G networks. And it is considered with these nice features that in three years or five years, more than half of the IoT applications will run on CIoT networks. So given all these benefits, its security is not well explored. Is it ready to support all those applications by providing a secure network? So in this work, we are in particular interested in the radio access network um, right here. So CIoT inherits 4G architecture. So base stations will cover geographical areas to provide wireless access. Uh, it is operated in a known channel, so it is potentially more vulnerable. On the other hand, the core network is generally inaccessible without any insider attack. It provides the control functions for the devices and forwards data from and to the CIoT uh, cloud or other servers. In this work, we look at the radio access network. So what are the security measures that already been deployed in this part? We note that it inherits the 4G security measures by doing this mutual authentication using the secured key. And after this procedure, it established a security context and all the subsequent data packets and control plane signaling messages will be encrypted. So it is considered secure. As a result, most existing attacks that have been published, they usually focus on manipulating this mutual authentication procedure or launching some attacks before this procedure. For example, uh, by using some forged broadcast messages to launch a fake base station attacks. In this work, we try to answer a different question. Is an attack still feasible against CIoT after this mutual authentication procedure? Unfortunately, the answer is positive as the data plane is still vulnerable after this mutual authentication procedure. So data plane sublayers have unicast signaling messages. They are used to facilitate data transfer. Such messages will include MAC layer control elements and RLC layer uh, control packets. And they provide functionalities such as power management, scheduling, reliable transfer, etc. However, unlike data packets, these data plane signaling messages are not protected at all, even after setting up this mutual authentication. Given this vulnerability, it is possible for an attacker to forge signaling messages without compromising any node in the network. The attacker can send signals over the air, which is captured by IoT device for downlink forgery or captured by the base station for uplink forgery. However, this is non-trivial. First, is it possible for the attacker to forge CIoT data plane signaling messages that is considered authentic by the receiver? Second, considering that most data plane signaling messages are insignificant compared to the data packets, can we launch serious damages? Can we incur serious damages by launching these forgery attacks? And finally, how can we defend such attacks by protecting data plane signaling? In a current CLT design, it is not protected. It's not, a, it's not a mistake, but it's rather a trade-off because protecting them actually will incur very much overhead. So can we consider a, a more efficient solution based on our study? Let's start with the first question, how to forge the signaling messages. In order to consider the receiver that a forged signaling message is from an authentic sender, the attacker needs to ensure the force signaling passes all the checks in both physical layer and MAC layer. 
on the physical layer, the forged signaling nodes, uh, the forged signaling messages need to use the correct encoding for unicast signaling messages so as to be decoded correctly by the receiver. Meanwhile, on the Mac layer, CLT takes a scheduling-based access. So the base station will assign each device in which resource blocks, which is the time frequency blocks, that a device can send data or receive data. So in order for the attack message to be accepted correctly, the attacker has to forge the messages in the correct or assigned RB. Let's take, take a look at the first challenge on the physical layer. So let's study for the authentic receiver, how can it learn all the parameters to decode correctly? It can get all necessary information to decode from two sources. One is from the broadcast messages, for example, to learn the, um, the reference signal configuration, et cetera. And the other part can be learned from the unicast DCI messages, which is the downlink control information from the base station to tell you what is the, um, what is the specific, uh, specific scheduling information and the specific encoding parameters that you're gonna use. Unfortunately, neither of this information is being protected, which means that the attacker can eavesdrop on the channel to learn the DCI and broadcast messages and use these parameters to correctly forge a signaling message that can be correctly decoded by the receiver. Next, let's take a look at the Mac layer. We will show that the assigned resource block can also be inferred by the attacker. LT adopts the same subframe scheduling, which means that uh, now we have the scheduling information received at this specific time, and the data will actually be transmitted in the same subframe for the downlink. This means that even if an attacker can infer the information of the scheduling, it's, it cannot be ready to transmit the forged signaling in the specific same time. On the other hand, for CLT, it's different. When we have this scheduling information, it includes an extra field which, spe which specifies the time difference between the scheduling information and the actual data transfer. Therefore, the attacker can eavesdrop on the channel to get scheduling information and use the standardized way to learn when is exactly the time it can use to forge the data, what is the time frequency that is being assigned to this specific de uh, victim device. This is called a cross subframe scheduling. With this vulnerability, scheduling can be inferred from clear text DCI ahead of time due to this cross subframe scheduling in the CLT networks. So our attack also addresses some other technical issues. For example, uh, we, our attacker has to overshadow the authentic signals so as to be captured by the victim device or have to synchronize with the base station to make sure the time are aligned. Uh, for more details, please refer to our paper on this part. Uh, we have validated these attacks using our SDR testbed with commercial off-the-shelf devices. We build our own MBLT SDR system. We build a standard compliant CLT network include both base station and the core network that can connect to commercial off-the-shelf devices. They are standard compliant and we have, them, we have a demo session yesterday um, illustrating this system. So if you missed that, you can also visit our website for more details. It will be a good way to kickstart your research if you wanna jump into the CLT networks. We also implement our attacker node using USRP and software defined radio. With this testbed, we successfully validate that a forged data plane signaling messages can be accepted by the device. On the server side, we verify that the uplink forgery is successful by checking the logs in our base station. On the device side, we use a tool called Mobile Insights for cellular IoT to decode all the messages received from the network and verify that the forged message has, has been successfully accepted by the device. The results show that both sides, the forgery has very high success rate. When the forged signaling has, uh, relative, has the perceived signaling strength 3 dB stronger than the authentic signal, it can receive a decent success rate of more than 40%. And if the signal strength is 7 dB greater than the authentic signal strength, it can achieve more than 99% of success rate. So with the forged message, what can we do? What kind of damage can we incur? In this paper, we introduce six different attacks with these four signaling messages. Each of the attack will carefully design its content and the context of the forgery so that it can cause the intended damages. 
Three of them leverage the four signaling message to cause damages inside uh, in a single protocol, while three others will cause damages in multiple protocols. And in this paper, uh, in this talk, I'm going to introduce one in each category. Uh, I'll introduce my first, our first attack, which is resource training with the buffer status report or BSR. And BSR is a data plane signaling messages on the Mac layer, which is used for the device to notify the base station how many data are there still to be sent for the uplink. For example, we can say, well, I have 100 bytes in buffer to be sent. And the base station will assign you the resource blocks accordingly. Therefore, the attacker can forge a BSR to claim that it has a large amount of data to be sent in this BSR message. And the base station will schedule according to this BSR value with its limited CLT uplink resources which will effectively blocking all other users' access, considering that CLT has a very narrow bandwidth. In our experiment, we show that during a time period, there are certain time slots which is entirely occupied by our uh, victim device, which is caused by the attacker message. The second attack is a cross-layer attack, which uses the message called RLC control. This is a message that acknowledge or negative acknowledges data specified with the sequence number. For example, the device can tell the base station the previous transmission on packet 13 and 12 has been lost, and the base station will retransmit this data. With this RSC control packet, the attacker can forge this RSC control with the NACK information. And the consequential damage is that the victim will consume energy but cannot send or receive any new data but keep receiving this old already received the data from the base station or to the base station. As we can see from this figure, the victim device keeps receiving the duplicated data for 400 milliseconds and cannot go to the sleep mode due to this attack. To defend against these attacks, we propose a low overhead defense solution that protects data plan signaling messages. It seems straightforward to encrypt and integrity protect every single message However, this is not very practical in, the, in reality because um, for the data packets, this is possible as first, the data packet has those sequence numbers attached with each one. So it can use that as a parameter to generate a key stream to avoid a key reuse attack. On the other hand, the Mac layer and, us, and the Mac layer doesn't have such parameters to generate them. To overcome this issue, we design a time-based scheme to secure data plan signaling messages. The key idea is CLT network in the device and the base station, they have synchronized time slots with the smallest ticks every one second, uh, millisecond. The base station will offset the propagation delay by synchronizing, this, um, by synchronizing the time clocks using the parameters exchanged over the air. Therefore, when there is a new signaling message to be sent, it can generate a stream key using the pre-shared key and the current time slots. This will generate a key, and we can use that to encrypt or integrity protect the data plan signaling message. After the base station receives the signaling message, it can use the same function and the same set of keys to generate the same key and use that to decrypt or integrity check the signaling message that has been received. The approach does not require frequent interaction between the Mac layer and higher layer to generate high overhead. So it is a low overhead solution that is suitable for the data plane signaling messages. We also prototype our solution in our SDR testbed and verify that it can correctly encrypt and decrypt the message. We find out that a solution is of low overhead for three reasons. First, it can reuse the existing 4G encryption and integrity protection scheme used for the data plane uh, packets and control plane signaling messages. Second, the processing overhead is small as it only generates 4.6 amortized processing overhead. Finally, it only generates four bytes extra data for every single signaling messages, which is of lower frequency compared to the data packets. So for the summary, in this work, we unveil multiple vulnerabilities in CIoT networks Especially, we find out the data plane signaling in the CLT networks is not secure. We have designed attacks that can successfully forge the uplink and downlink signaling messages and cause various damages. 
To combat against this attack, we designed a time-based protection scheme to encrypt and integrity protect the data plane signaling messages. This is one of the first work to study CLT network security. And we wish our effort plus the test bed we build and the tool we build for CLT networks can stimulate more work in this area. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any question.